so again, as I was sharing the, um, you can imagine the, the inspiration of, of encountering cymatics for the first time for me, um, was to taking in this, this scientist and Jeff actually had a slide before that was very similar to this only it was Yenny as the artist. And, um, you know, we were making this presentation. It really struck me as we were kind of comparing, um, the two versions of this person and recognizing that they're really one person, <laughs> um, you know, Jenny's work uh, felt so, so similar to my own journey with design versus art or design and art and recognizing that, you know, the work can be actually expressed in both sides of that uh, with beautiful forms, inspiring motion, formlessness and formation and the journey that that takes us on collectively. Um, and I, you know, it's very clear that for every image that and film that we see that Yenny created in his labs, it feels right to consider them all as artistically credible. Um, and Jeff continued to share with me photography and other work of this from contemporary German researcher Alexander Lauterwasser um, in another book that he publishes called Water Sound Images. And wow, that was just completely mind blowing. <laughs> as again, we start to see some of the very things that Kellerman was was speaking of, and the way we start to see cymatics all around us in the world. Um, breathtaking experiments, not only in what they make visible from resonance, but as independent works of art, again, themselves, always inviting us to say, what am I seeing here? What is it? What is it reminding me of? What is, what if, what is this familiar? Um, additionally, fun is, of course, applying certain resonant frequencies to different materials, something Yenny did, um, as well as many other artists and scientists and people who study cymatics, in this case, turpentine derived from a pine tar. Why we would ever be surprised to see the forms of a pine cone emerge from that? Of course not. We were absolutely curiously delighted. Um, animating paraffin wax. We would not expect to see perhaps anything else, but the shapes of honey cones start to emerge. And even in the most complex geometrically intricate forms created into cymatics, we can find and bear witness to analogs of these forms in nature. Many, many, many ways. So in the addition of Hans Yeni's cymatics that Jeff was mentioning, um, it was just such a gift and an honor to be able to be part of this fifth publishing of those two volumes and uh, worked with so many wonderful collaborators. And perhaps um, <laughs> the one who was the most important was someone who came along our path and we were so close to being done. And she, she commented, she said, you know, this isn't really doing the work justice. There's so much more that we could be telling by making it approachable and actually bringing forth all of the wonderful people you all know who are working in cymatics today. Um, and so it was a real opportunity for us to get new writing, new forwards, um, and build up, you know, incredible sections of additional work um, that had happened since the first publishing um, in 2001. So recognizing, you know, artists and others like Kellerman, who we've just saw the work, of and then recognizing some other artists and, and sound healers and others who've been working in the space. Um, this is the work of Lachlan Turkson, who actually recently partnered with Google to produce a whole exhibit in the Milan Design Week called Shaped by Water. Where I'm doing these absolutely stunning uh, illustrations of light and sound projection. If anybody's been watching the Amazon continuation of the Lord of the Rings series or the prequels, a uh, ring called Rings of Power, the company that actually did this, uh, did all the special effects for that, um, actually used cymatics in the beginning uh, for the introduction. And what's been so remarkable is as well to see how they have used in their second season cymatic animating, cymatic animations to represent magic, um, which has just been uh, really fun and exciting to see. Um, we. Uh, are featuring in the book as well, work of artist Jacob Lee Edlington, who's really taken cymatic imagery to an entirely new level of detail with his photography um, between color and just absolutely breathtaking uh, mandala-like work. And Rachel Linton, who actually is another artist in that region of the world, who's using cymatics literally to form the sculptural materials that she works with um, and creating absolutely evocative and remarkable pieces. Um, partially molded and, and formed by sound. <laughs> 